Hey everyone, um, I'm back with another formation guide. Uh, I've been trying this one out basically since early access, I think. Um, just kind of grinding it in Rivals and seeing what works with it and what doesn't work with it. Uh, I haven't tested it in Weekend League because it hasn't started yet, but I'm pretty confident in saying that this will be relatively reasonable to run. Um, I've been up and down between Divisions 1 and 2 just working out the kinks of this formation. Um, the formation guide is, is is attached so you can sort of read the rationale for what I was doing. In this video, the, the match is only five minutes because the guy ends up rage quitting, but I just want to like go over a few key concepts that you can sort of visualize, especially in terms of like team shape and stuff like that. Let's start the game. And I also picked this game because the opponent I face, you can see a squad I mean, this is pretty much <laughs> the meta squad. You're going to face this all of Weekend League for the first, like, two or three weeks. So this is just proof to show that it works in high elos against very meta teams. Um, and actually, I didn't show the team I was running. I, let me click around to it. This team is gone now. Ah, uh, it's not here. Um, but it, oh, here it goes, here it goes. It's a very, like, very simple Serie A squad. It's like Dybala, Milinkovic, Savage, Gomez, that kind of stuff. So nothing crazy. I've sold all those players, actually, because what I found out is that you don't really need great players to run this formation. You just need players who fit within the scheme of how this formation works. So let's go over that here. Okay, so first thing I do, just switch it over to defensive. Pass it around so we sort of get back into shape and all that fun stuff. I hate this beginning part. I want to just build the lineup so it, I don't have to change anything. Press any button. We don't really take shape till we get to like the final third kind of thing. Okay, we're almost here now. Okay, here we are. So you can see already, as we're like getting into the shape, all of the pitch is covered. If you want to like draw an invisible line between like each quadrant of the field where my mouse is sort of hovering over, we have at least two men in each quadrant. It's kind of the idea. We want to cover the whole pitch with this formation. Oh, and I picked this game because it's like a very laggy game. So you can even see that it works with lag. There's the press after possession loss. So the thing about that I like about this formation is that in division rivals and in weekend league, people are just gonna pack the box. Like the game's just started and this dude's already like packing the box. He's already got like he's gonna have like seven men behind the ball already. What I like about this formation is that as you slowly build up to the opponent's final third, you get more and more players into the box. But it's also, they take even, even like, spaces in the final third, so they're not all on one side of the pitch. So when you do lose the ball, the press after possession loss is going to kick in, and you'll have a guy in all spots of the, the field, so you, you get a lot of win, uh, balls back. That's the first thing. The second thing is you can see Fabinho, who is the middle cent CDM who drops back into center back, as per the instructions. You can see how he started out in the back to form a back three, but then when the press starts, he pushes up. Um, and so what that does is, if you win the ball back, you always have the CDM as like a recycling option. So watch what happens. I'm going to pass the ball away from Fabinho, and then watch what he does. He goes right back to being a center back again. So you have this, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the technical name for what Fabinho does in this, or the CDM does in this formation. He's not a libero per se. Um, but he's like a free CDM. He's 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 like able to seamlessly transition from being a middle center back to a middle CDM. He's just gonna run up and down a straight line. So he's gonna like win the ball for you on the counter, but in the press, he's also gonna be able to push up and be that like Sergio Busquets kind of like recycling passing option. Second, uh, another thing I wanted to point out is Jesus Navas. So he's playing fullback, and the instructions in this formation, I ask that you put your one, you need attacking fullbacks, but two, put them on balanced and mixed attack instructions. Most people put fullbacks in overlap, which is the you know common thing to do. Um, but what mixed attack does is it tells them to go inside and play inverted fullback once in a while. Um, so like Andy Robertson's over here, he's playing like overlapping fullback to make runs down the channel, but Novice is like cut into the midfield. So what this does is it throws off the shape of what the enemy team wants to defend against. And as you see, you can see like as Navas pushes in to be an inverted fullback, my right center back just pushes out wide. 
And again, because we have Fabinho being this like free center back, he can just man mark the lone striker up top. So even though you're in a back three with attacking fullbacks, you still have a lot of defensive solidarity. Here we go. So here's the counter. I fucked the pass up, whatever. Not worrying about my offense right now. But this is going to be pretty typical in people's weekends league. Counter attack, or sorry, you mess up a pass or you lose a ball in the final third. The team sits back with nine people and then they find Rashford on the counter. Like, you can't make this stuff up. But, again, because of this Fabinho position, really the Kevin Phillips, Calvin Phillips in, like, Leeds kind of position, he's able to just, like, slow down the run. And all you need to do is slow the t slow the counter down. And at, if you slow the counter down, you'll be back in a back five and have defensive solidarity again. I want to pause it right here. Again, we're, I'm red. You can see we have pretty much a player or two in every part of the pitch. This entire thing is covered. So it's really easy to play possession here. There's the press. Fabian moves up. And again, he can do that. So I slow, I just, Joe, he's running with Joe Gomez. I slow him down. Fabinho is allowed to push up because he, he can do that because there's two center backs back here. So even on the counter, we're never really a man down. Naturally, he, <laughs> he rinses me, right? But it doesn't matter. Your gets it right back. And again, look at the shape of the formation. We're, we're still in like uh, a shape that covers the entire pitch. Uh, another thing I want to point out is on dead ball situations, so when you're just playing defense, because you have the wingers on cut, um, come come back on defense, if you need to like be defensively solid, you still can do that. You can look look into shapes like an H. Like we actually play, are playing are playing pretty defensively from that perspective. I like this formation because you're allowed to play defensively without playing negatively. And you're allowed to play offensively without giving up too much defensive solidarity. I almost got called with that, by the way. I didn't expect him to do like, the young skills or some shit. But that's why I like it so much. And again, look at the counter. There's players everywhere. It's really hard to mark that. There's Rubinho playing that free-roaming CDM. I don't even know what you call it. And again, you can be really aggressive offensively because of the press. Like I said, if you lose that ball, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. When you're in the final third, you should be aggressive with this formation. Because you're going to have a guy in every part of the pitch. So what that means is that your press is a lot cleaner because you have more people there. So you can be aggressive here. Like, I'm very sloppy with the air. But because I have two men down the middle and then two men on the wing, I depress the possession loss, kicks in right there, and I just win the ball back. So what it does is it allows you to win a lot of 50-50 balls that you normally wouldn't win because in a normal 4-2-3-1 or whatever, uh, players are just in really awkward positions on offense. They're just kind of moving without rhyme or reason, you know, because it's just the way the settings are. But in this, you're allowed to, to sort of control that. Again, look at the shape on the bottom. We're everywhere. This is the offensive CDM spot. So if you got like the CM spot, so I use Milinkovic to have it here. If you got him, Nangolan, De Bruyne, Bruno Fernandes, Goretzka, those kind of guys. Guys who are box to box but still like have a little offensive punch. There he goes. I don't know what he was doing there. This CM spot will get a lot of goals. They're going to like make those late runs into the box. Or be the ball carrier themselves and find one of the wingers on the outside. Uh, 
Again, it's so like I said, so nice to run the counters because I got a guy in every line of the pitch. It's four across. Five across right now, but it's usually four or five across. And then, again, let's say I lose... The, I'm not going to lose the ball here, but let's say this guy playing Diego Carlos just runs up and slide tackles me and wins the ball back. If that were to happen, I still am defensively solid. I have Fabinho roaming the middle area of the pitch so he can sort of break up the play over here. I still have two center backs guarding the last runner. My full backs are because they're pushed up, right? If, if my full backs weren't stay back while attacking, they'd be back here. But because they're unbalanced, they're allowed to push up and at least stay in the general zone of one of the wingers. That's lucky about this about that pass. I saw Diabala, but Lautaro's just not that good of a passer, so he fucked it up. For that strike spot, you want someone who's pacey and or big, but you also want them to be pretty good at passing the ball. So like uh Harry Kane would do really well in this formation. Um like Lewandowski would do great in this formation. Players like that. You want you want your balanced strikers. They would do really well here. There's Fabinho recycling the ball again. Didn't know he was going to do that. So look at possession. Like, this is unbalanced. I'm not playing possession in the custom tactics. So I'm unbalanced. But because you cover so much of the pitch on offense, you will probably average at least 60% possession. I've gotten games in, in Rivals like 70. I had one that was like 78 or 80% possession. And I wasn't trying to play keep away, as you can see. I'm like playing progressively. I'm playing, you know, positively. It's just the way the formation is. You always have an option in the midfield. So it becomes like, a, a, like I said, positive possession. You're not just doing it for possession's sake. Whereas I feel sometimes possession players, like I, I'm a possession player, but like sometimes you can end up playing possession for the sake of possession without actually wanting to do anything with it. But I didn't. And you don't feel that way in this in this formation. You play possession, but it's a very progressive and advanced uh, position. Uh, possession. So now us doing the inverted thing again, and you can see Robertson over here on the far. We're doing the overlapping thing, and look, we have four cross again. Auto blocks need to go away and die because I would have banged that into the top corner. Whatever. Okay, so here's the counter again. We have it's three. It's three on two. More or less, 3-on-1 if you want to think about it that way. But we'll say 3-on-2. He's got the outlet to the winger. He can't pass to the middle because Fabinho will be all on it. I have a choice here. I can commit to the runner or I can commit wide. I choose to commit wide. And then as soon as I see Robertson get back, I come back towards the middle. I missed the slide tackle is all. But that was the idea. And then Robertson just goes across and covers my ass. Also really important here is... One of the things I like about this back three versus other back threes is that this back three, because of the weird position that Fabinho occupies, it's pretty much press proof. It's really hard for people to press this formation because you're always in a two on one advantage. So like if you get pressed like right here, he's like he's coming down. But look how many outlets I have. I have Thiago Silva right here. I have a midfielder over here. I have a long pass option over here. I have a long pass option over here. Or I can just kick it back to goal. It's really hard to press this position or press this formation, and you end up with a lot of this. Like people come at you, and you just find an easy outlet ball, and then you're back into your counter. Because most people run either a cam and a striker or two strikers. There's always two people up top, but you always have three center backs, so it's hard to get a press on you. And you win these 50-50 balls because look at the. Uh, map again. I'm covering the entire pitch. I have a guy in every quadrant of the field. And you can see like Rashford sitting up here. He's a, probably on stay forward, I'm guessing. But he can't do anything because Fabinho is marking him by himself. And I still have two center backs back there as well. And the thing about that Fabinho spot is you hear, hear, as he comes up here, you can be really aggressive with it because he's not actually a center back. So if you want to push into the ball carrier, you can do that because you still have two center backs to help you out in the back.
There's the block. There's the one too. And there he goes. <laughs>